Hello, hello everybody. It's us again. It's the Long Run Podcast live on YouTube and hopefully Facebook this week. Fingers crossed that Toby sorted out all the uh, technical issues we had last week. But um, we're all hopeful. We remain um, optimistic that we'll be able to get that off the ground this week. Um, how's everybody been? I hope you've, um, those who um, got through the 26.2 miles of um, London last week, I, I hope you had a great day. I saw loads of you. Loads of great pictures and loads of stuff on Facebook, all about all about your wonderful weekends. And we're going to talk to a couple of people today who had their first taste of um, that big race. Um, Alan's back after a week's article. Lovely to see you, mate. Yeah, it's Tim. good to be back. Had a little refresh, week away, ready to go. Yeah, I think I'm due one of them, really. Yeah, he's thought he's worked me in the ground doing this on a Friday night. But, um, yeah, you'll probably notice that... Um, there's one glare and a mission that he's not here this week. And um, Chris is um, currently, rather than talking to this bunch of uh, juveniles, he's um, he's at his uh, daughter's 10th birthday. And um, yeah, he's, um, he's been invited to pay the bill um, wherever they've gone. So he's unavailable this week, but he's here in spirit, of course he is. And uh, Toby's here too, he's directing operations. So good to see you, mate. How you doing? I'm as pleased because I just realized Facebook's live. Oh well, that's all right. Well, we can, uh, we can celebrate. That, that already means it's better than last week, and that's all you can aim for, really. Exactly. And um, we are joined by two very special guests, um, Paul Berry and Claire Myvan, and who were the lucky recipients of the forty runs ballot places for um, London last week. So we're going to have a chat with them. A little bit later on about um, their experiences and um, how it all went so welcome along ladies lovely to see you thanks for coming Thank you. thanks oh it's great TV. okay then so um toe before we start well we'll talk we've got to talk london really and we promise that we're, good, we're not going to keep banging on about london every week this is going to be the last time the last week that we're going to talk about london 2021 so um toby i wanted to bring in you first mate because um how did your race go? I saw, I saw you wasted no energy when it came to breaking four hours. Was it, what was it, 3.59, 40 something? Well, you know, I didn't want to push it too much. <laughs> no, no, that was, uh, I wouldn't have said it was easy. And that was, that was your first um, race. Well, you did Dorney, didn't you? Which did the Dorney. world invented um, Dorney marathon episode that we won't go into because people yeah. are having their tea. But this is definitely you did that. that. And then, um, and you did the virtual last year, and there you only two marathon experiences, is that right? I did that. I did a New Year marathon um, locally with some of the Boxbourne group and, and a few other people uh, here. We did a went New Year's Eve, I think it was, went out and ran a marathon. Why not? You know? <laughs> well, well, so you right, eh? Yeah. So, but it was my first official proper event, I would say. As much as Dorney, obviously Dorney was Dorney for me. But also, you know, you don't get the crowds, you don't get the same experience as a proper event, like a you know, community kind of event, I suppose, in a way. Um, so, yeah, that was my first. So, yeah, really enjoyed it. And and you've been training with Chris throughout, hadn't you? And Chris has documented that he's had a few issues, perhaps in the last few weeks, health-wise. And um, when he was looking to, um, it weren't, he wasn't able to push on as much as he would have liked to have done. Um, how how did you, how was your training affected by that by being a training partner because obviously lots of people do these so i mean i've got my first marathon next week and i've been predominantly on my own apart from when i've been out on tuesday nights for the harford group but you've been predominantly in a partnership with your training how how do you cope with the fact that sometimes you know your partner might have problems i mean yeah obviously we, we've done a lot of training together um as much as that, you know, it was kind of individual we knew, but because we're at a similar place, especially at the beginning, um, you know, all the training was relevant. Um, and to be honest, I we, we both sort of knew towards the end of the training that neither of us have actually managed to complete the plan um, as we had liked. I mean, my training, I think there's a we did a recap video, uh, it's on the channel of how we think it went, and both said we, we got the long miles in and we started doing that early. Um, but the midweek stuff we really struggled with. Um, mm. And for me, it was time. Really struggled to fit that in with time. Um, Chris obviously had, you know, various niggles and bits and, and medical bit things that stopped him. 
Um, so we sort of we we adjusted what we were doing, which is we wanted to finish and finish around the four hours. I mean, a sub four hour for me would have been great, which I managed to get. Um, and having that target really helped at the end because I knew on the last few miles I needed to push to get there. Um, and that, that really kept me going. Um, we ran the race mainly up to mile 20 together. Yeah. Mainly with Chris telling me off for going too fast, which is unusual. It's normally the other way around. But I, I, I swear, I just got carried away with it. And so it's the first time I've done something like that. And it's the, the support was brilliant. I, I underestimated really having, having my name on my top. Well, how much support that gives i mean the whole way around you just got people shouting your name yeah you don't most of them you don't know but it also means people you do know you kind of miss because you didn't know it was them um but the whole way around <laughs> it just pushes you on and you know and you sort of go those points where you want to walk you sort of go i can't i've got to keep on going so what will you take out of the training experience then from this one you know because it's all it's all a learning experience i'm sure that this is not going to be the last marathon that you do so what are you going to take out of it um, I'm going to mainly take out what that the midweek training matters. That's the big thing for me. As I say, we we did a lot of long runs and weekend runs. We managed to fit in all our long runs mainly, but it was the midweek sort of speed stuff. And the, so where the speed and the strength come into it, that's what I missed, and that's what I'm going to take forward. Is that I need to put a lot more into those. Yeah, I'm really going to original. jump in there, Ty, because I think that's a really really good point. Is that particularly if you're doing your first or second marathon, you're going to get fixated on those long, long miles. But actually, it's the speed endurance that can kind of just get you over the line. And those tempo runs, even if they're six, eight, ten miles, can make a big difference. So, yeah, anyone thinking about it, don't neglect the speed work. Speed Did you manage life. to get any of that within your long runs, Toad? Did you manage to sort of like get sort of five miles at a, a decent clip after sort of doing ten and things like that? Yeah, I mean, we did quite a, a few of them. We, we would put a bit of goal pace in there, um, whether that be, you know, we'd do five out easy, do five at goal pace and, you know, five at uh, sort of easy again, or, or we'd sort of try and put in 5K or five miles at the end at goal pace, just so that, you know, you're emulating those tired legs, um, which is where it really sort of starts to count and pull. But obviously, the first five miles, you kind of, you say you, hey, you get carried away and you're feeling quite fresh and thinking i could just go a bit faster which which don't kiss of death yeah <laughs> yeah not a good plan <laughs> but yeah so so we did put in a bit of that sort of speed um sort of goal pace in there but it's those really high intense efforts during the midweek where you're really pushing um at the top end that really really help with the strength and the endurance but then, you know, you've got the adaptability of a plan. You can always sort of like just adapt it for next time, can't you? That's the beauty of uh, doing these sort of things. Alan, you were there, spe um, not, not spectating, too busy to spectate, weren't you? Yeah, so I was with uh, a gang of about, I suppose it must have been about 30, 40s on mile 12 water station. So it was an early start for us. I think we were clocking in about half past seven, um, getting the water station set up. Must admit, first 20 minutes, I don't think anyone took any water as those super elites and the super club athletes went whizzing past. But by about 10 o'clock, we were really busy. Yeah, but it was a really good place to be. I think I saw Paul. I'm not sure I saw you, Claire, but it was great to kind of um, see people reaching that point where they needed a little bit of a boost. I felt a bit guilty for a few people that were so pleased to get to halfway. I'm again uh, 12 miles i'm afraid it's not halfway actually 16 miles is closer to halfway psychologically so keep on going <laughs> but uh, uh yeah it was, it was it was a good day a long day and we managed to finish early enough that we could then nip down to the embankment and again i think i saw paul and a few of them uh around about mile 22 so uh that was good to, to give him a cheer and toby's absolutely right you know getting the name on your shirt is so important because it just gives everyone an opportunity to to cheer you on and, and, it, and it doesn't matter how random it is you could see people just really appreciative of that little cheer whether they were walking whether they were crying i think it was raining at that point so uh, anything to really give them a little bit of push for that last little bit before they got to see big ben around the embankment so yeah 
It was a good day out. I don't know we had lots of chat about was the London Marathon going to be the London Marathon and, and we'll find out a little bit more from Paula and Claire. But I think once everyone got over the start line, it felt like the London Marathon again. And again, it certainly, it certainly looked like it from uh, where I was sat on my sofa looking out for people and following them on the app and all that, you know, it definitely did have the spectacle. It was the spectacle that we've um, become so used to. And, and then people did, you know, there was a realistic thing that people thought it'd never come back after um, after what's happened in the last 18 months. So it was great to see. So we really, <clears throat> excuse me, really ought to... Uh, talk to our guests now haven't we and um, find out all about their brilliant e well I hope it was a brilliant experience I'm taking it for granted it was a brilliant experience they haven't been reluctant to come on and tell us about it so um, it can't have been that bad so I'll just ha say hello to Paula and Claire and if in turn you could just tell people a little bit about yourselves and give you a little introduction that'd be great Paula, uh, Paula if you go first okay um Oh, well, I'm, I'm Paula. I've been running about four years. I'm 50 now. Um, this is my first proper experience of a marathon. Did it virtually last year. Um, time logged on that was six hours and 57 minutes. Um, I obviously wanted to better that this year. Um, and obviously being there made such a huge difference to me. I think... Um, it was it was a really amazing experience, I have to say, and I clocked it in at five twenty two forty one, so I was I was very happy with that. Um, you know, <laughs> the nerves in the morning got the better of me, and I think I might have overhydrated. I had to stop for a pee three times on the route. Paul, this is a, this is a family show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of Um, and then that was a. <laughs> five minute 40 cuddle at mile 18 um and so i think i might have done a little bit better had i not stopped so many times but um i just soaked it up i mean i, I found the whole rolling start really good i um didn't mind the, the the sort of the staggered start i've been up there before with somebody else who did it about 20 years ago and I have to say that kind of that slow walking through the start, you know, he was saying it was like an hour to get over the start line previously, mm -hmm. whereas this time it was much more fluid and easy to deal with. And you were over the start line before you knew it. It was it was very quick. I'm, I'm sure Claire will concur on that one. It yeah, was definitely. very, very mm -hmm. smooth. Um, yeah, I mean, I've only been running like for four years, so to achieve this now is 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 really good now claire you, you've been talking about doing a marathon for quite some time haven't you but the opportunity came in rather different circumstances when your name was drawn out yeah of the hat, didn't it? yeah so i i i kind of thought i would never ever do one and then it got to the point where i thought i should probably otherwise i'll always regret not trying um so i applied for brighton um, and I got into Brighton uh, for the next it? year. Come on. And then um, about two weeks later, the, um, the 40 ballot happened. And I kind of deliberated really hard about whether I should apply or not and through the 40 ballot. Because um, I thought, oh, you know, the chances, you know, I, I don't know, it, it's just not going to happen. Whether, you know, somebody else will do it better than me. You know, other people deserve a chance that have tried so many times. Um, and then I was kind of brave and I did it. And when the email came through, I, I just grabbed my husband's arm and I went and I just passed my phone across and went, look. And uh, just, I was absolutely stunned. And then, uh, so I was, yeah, it was brilliant. I was so excited from that point onwards because it's the London Marathon. And well, that is- when, when that dropped. Funnily enough, Chris had to send me a private message to tell me to check my emails because I obviously <laughs> hadn't <laughs> and yes I was a bit gobsmacked because I've tried probably seven times now to get in via mm. the normal ballot so um yeah and obviously I've been affiliated only with 40s for the last year so I was a bit kind of blown away really um yeah very very and surprised so how did how did you both um approach the training because um it was it was dropped on your lap really you know the, the decision was only made sort of like 
you know, if you had a four month plan, it was like four and a half months. It was only two or three weeks, wasn't it, before? No, I think it was a week before. I think it was a, literally a week before we needed to start training. Wasn't yeah, it, there wasn't much, like that. Was, yeah, there wasn't much time yeah. to. But I suppose the reality of that, as I've, I've thought about it afterwards, that they, when they drop club places, club runners should, I suppose, be kind of probably running ready, shouldn't they, at, to a, a certain mm. level anyway. So. And I think most of us probably were at kind of half marathon distance level at that point anyway. Mm. So it yeah. didn't feel it didn't feel too too big a task. Although I didn't book my hotel until I clocked my twenty miler. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was uh yeah, I wasn't sure. So I I, uh, I I I had a bit of unfortunately I've got Lyme's disease right. and um I've had I had a flare up in the middle of training. So I was really on the fence, uh, you know, the week before my 20 miler was due. So, yeah. <laughs> and Claire, with um, you being a teacher as well, it's been a very demanding time away from your running too. How have you managed to sort of, how did you manage to sort of cram it all in? Do you know, I was really lucky because even though one of the reasons I applied for Brighton next year was because it was an April and not an October one. So I didn't have to train through the summer. That was my logic um, because I don't like running in the hot weather. Um, I was really lucky because I have the, the luxury of a six week summer holiday, don't I? So at the point where it was getting really, really hard and the training was really, really long, um, I, I had six weeks at home to do it and I was you know, unlike a lot of other people who have to sort of work through through that and that last bit that's become really hard, I was really fortunate. It did mean things like when we went on holiday, we were away, I was away with the family in Devon in the summer, um, we would get somewhere and then I would say to my husband, right, I've got to go and run nine miles now, I've got to go and run 10 miles now, I'll see you back at the beach. And I kind of would just go and run somewhere um, just to get the miles in really and then when I got I think the hardest run I did probably of my training apart from the 20 mile because that was really hot was when I came back from Devon and I'd been sitting in the car for five or six hours driving and I had to get out of the car get changed and then go out and run 12 miles that was really tough really hard going um but I loved it you know it was it was good and and I wouldn't change a thing actually and it wouldn't put me off summer training um now i think i'd always said oh no i could never do that but you can do it because you can just adapt and if you really don't like the heat go out mm. then sort of six o'clock in the morning have quite a few long runs at six o'clock in the morning just to avoid the heat and then it's much more manageable i think um, I we we're really well, lucky on the day you know people might be cursing about the weather that we've had this summer but for us it's been great isn't it because it's been yeah uh, there was it wasn't it was a it lot wasn't more manageable training yeah and we were so lucky on the day as well i don't know how paula felt but i just thought oh that's that was it was just amazing to me that the week before the the temperature sort of went from summer to sort of autumn didn't it it was really it really sort of just chilled you know cooled down a lot and uh, and it was perfect apart from the sort of the rain i think that for, storm for me. was in that, that storm was incredible yeah there i was, was a, i think there was a rain where were you at, just i think yeah. i was at like mile 20 or something at that point and the and the railing just went right over and it took yeah. out about 10 runners while it, yeah. and and that all the charity people were trying to hold down their um, gazebos on the side of the road yeah. it was nuts absolutely yeah. nuts but 10 minutes later i, I was dry yeah and then the sun came out again i think sabrina and i were at mile 23 but the problem we had was that we were so we'd been so hot that when the rain came um and where we were all sort of sweating whatever all the salt went in our eyes and we couldn't see anything because we were you know blinded by the sort of the salt in our mm. eyes so that was sort of and then the sun came out again um really strange weather but still brilliant and it's still, it was a perfect temperature for us or for me definitely yeah me. Um, i was really relieved because i because i suffered badly on the 20 mile when it was really really hot um i think it was about 27 when we did that really hot did that with petra and it was so hot um so yeah so really like bedford good. yeah bedford yeah it was it was a very very warm day yeah 
very warm day but that and that made it 10 times harder and and that kind of reminded me of all the reasons I don't like doing summer running but it was the only really bad one that I had to do in the whole of my training so I was I was really fortunate so what was it Paula what was it like sort of like the week before going into it and like going to the expo and sort and all that sort of thing how was that for an experience um well it was quite busy obviously because I didn't get there till Saturday well, I could have gone earlier, uh, but Karen uh, Lumley was coming down to meet me and she was going to make sure she got me there because I don't know London very well at all, even though I don't live that far away. Uh, so we went Saturday afternoon and it was there was it was quite a lot of queues um, at that point and they didn't have a lot of stuff left at that point either. Mm. So even if I'd wanted to buy loads, I couldn't. Um, but no, that's that, a good thing sorry that was a good thing yeah i did i bought this this t-shirt um at the expo and then i when i went to get my medal engraved on monday i queued outside the new balance store on oxford street and had that done on the day um and i bought some more stuff there so it was fine <laughs> And, and Claire, you mentioned Sabrina. She's just chipped in, actually. Claire, you are my hero. There was no one better to run those 26.2 miles with. Now, Sabrina comes training with us on a um, on a Tuesday at Hartford, doesn't she? She was doing her first, yes. um, first marathon. We've had her on the show before. She was one of our earliest guests. Now, you two ran the whole way together, didn't you? We did. We were really did lucky. you devise that plan? Because it wasn't something that... I'd overheard you talking about before um, in the sort of like yeah. the week of the training beforehand. We didn't. We didn't really. We got we got there. We met each other um, at the with the, at the tube with Tracy Whittington and with Jim. Um, and Sabrina was just supposed to be in the wave behind me, just three minutes behind me. And uh, she she said, she, "I'm going to try and get in your wave." She said, and so "I said, right, brilliant, okay." So we we lined up. And um, the marshal was checking the bibs, and uh, he said, uh, "He said, right, okay, yeah, wave twelve, off you go, you can go in." And uh, Sabrina sort of pulled up a jumper, or opened a jumper, and said, and he looked at her bib, and it was wave thirteen. And uh, he just looked at Sabrina, and Sabrina looked at him, and then he looked at me, and we both sort of stood there for a second, and he went, "Go on then." So that was how it started, and it was really good. And we kept each other going the whole time. She was fantastic. She just was, you know, she was brilliant. She was so, and it was so lovely to share the experience with somebody else because I didn't think that was going to happen. We didn't have to plan to do that, but it was, it was great. It was really nice, and uh, we had a good, you know, we had good fun. Going over Tower Bridge was amazing. We stopped and did a bit of a selfie there. We had a little video and uh, yeah it was great it was really good so uh, being with sabrina i imagine that was, was was she chatty was there plenty of talk no no talking no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I was i was the same we would we would chat there were point, points when we were really chatty and there were points where we just we were just running alongside each other and that was nice too you know just to have know that each other were there we had one scary moment at the water station. I think it was where where Alan said he, you know, didn't think he saw me. I didn't see Alan because I was saying hello to the other Hartford girls who were on the water station, and uh, and uh, I thought Sabrina was ahead of me, but she and she hadn't sort of left the water station yet because I think she was saying hello to Alan, and uh, and I, we lost each other for about thirty seconds, and there was a kind of feeling of a bit of panic. I was thinking, oh god, yeah, I remember that. There was I've Sabrina got really kind of a bit jumpy. Yeah. Like, oh, I've lost Claire. I've lost Claire. Where's she going? Yeah. I was like, I don't know. And then we found each other again, <laughs> and that was all good. It was all good, and and we ran the rest of the race. And honestly, it was brilliant. It was so lovely to run with her. Really, really good. Really good. So, Paula, you had um, you said you did the virtual before. Did you sort of like? How much did that, I mean, obviously it is running 26.2 miles, but how much did that experience help you knowing that you've done that before? I think, yeah, it definitely helped. I knew that I'd covered the distance, um, but I think it was it was harder doing the virtual because obviously the support wasn't out there. Although everywhere we went, everyone had been told off, you see somebody with a bib on, give them a shout. And actually when we ran back, when we were on the second half on the way back from that run, 
there was cars bibbing their horns at us mm -hmm. and shouting at us from cafes and stuff but we picked quite a remote route so <laughs> it was quite isolating and there was five of us together thankfully but we lost two on halfway because one of them had a knee injury so they walked like i think it was about 12 miles i think they walked in the end and the rest of us just stuck together so it was three of us that came in to finish at the same time so yeah i suppose it was just good knowing i'd done the distance i just wanted to do the community proud if you know what i mean i suspect claire feels the same just that kind of yeah you're given that that spot i've always wanted to run london always so you know i would say that is my bucket list run so i'm ecstatic that i've done it um last year i had no clue about gels and water and hydration even though i've been running for all this time um we literally obviously bought the places about three weeks before the virtual happened so i i didn't do any real training other than kind of probably five or six miles so it was a very different experience yeah but that, did you switch into it okay like the the training regime did, was that something that you enjoyed doing or was yeah. it slower than you didn't no, like it? No, it was, it was good. I mean, obviously, I had a bit of a curveball friend of me, obviously, with the, with the limes flaring up. And then it was my 50th birthday right in the middle of training as well. Uh, so that wasn't such good timing. Um, but I ran the big half and then I upped my miles from then. So I, I, I did that one. And then I did my two longest runs in the same week. So I ran 16 miles on Bank Holiday Monday. And then my 20 miler on the Saturday. Yeah. So that was a tough week. Um, and then I did a couple of like 10 milers and then I did the bridges run with, with all the 40 gang. So that was my last long run, mm. apart from a 10 K, which I did on the Monday before the marathon. Um, I probably didn't run as many miles as some people would think they'd run in training either. So I wished I'd probably done another longer one in between the 16 and the 20 but mm. lesson learned i think in that respect I'll, next time if i do another one next time is it going well, to be next time well when i first came away i said definitely not and then i signed in the ballot not yesterday day before <laughs> 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 so um yeah there's um you know so you had a bit of experience to build on anyway and even if you knew that you didn't perhaps do it as yeah, well I mean this. Yeah, time. I mean this time I I I gelled every forty five minutes all the way through. Mm. I ate breakfast properly. I had a caffeine shot on the start line, and um, plenty of water. So it, yeah, it was much better. And um, Claire, was your sort of um, the fact that you sort of like got this ad hoc um, arrangement with Sabrina that you were did that. Uh, did that um, affect your sort of fueling strategy or anything like that? Or did you just stick to your guns of what you were going to do? It improved it because Sabrina was, I was keeping an eye on the pace and Sabrina was telling me when to take the gels. Because I think the one thing that I have realised on the long runs, which I never really appreciated before, was how quickly those 45 minutes go between each, each gel it just flies past and when you're talking and when you're you know everybody's shouting and yelling and I kept on saying to Sabrina right are we nearly there yet are we you know is it near jail because I could feel myself dipping a little bit um and uh, she was like yeah right five minutes time and so that was brilliant for me and I think I probably wouldn't have done that anywhere near as well on my own because I just forget sometimes and and then you've got the danger of kind of leaving it too long and then dipping mm -hmm. So uh, for me, it was brilliant, the fact that she yeah, was Yeah, Alan, you've, you've spoken before, haven't you, about sort of like sometimes it's going along so swimmingly that you forget yeah. to fuel. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no and it, it doesn't happen all the time, but I, I've quite often finished races of a range of distances and you go out, you suddenly realise you've got three gels left in your pocket and you think, well, actually, I've done myself a disfavour there. A, I could have done without the weight, and B, I probably would have benefited from taking on a bit of fuel. Um so it, it, you're right, Claire, you know, you think 45 minutes normal in a training run is going to drag, but boom, because of London, because of the atmosphere, so because of all the experience, you kind of have to just check mm. yourself in, because if you don't, you'll, you'll feel it later on in the in the race. 
it'll catch up with you. So uh, early yeah. and often would be my advice. And no, uh, I, I think that's uh, the gel thing for me really helps break up the race. I find as well is that my you know it's not miles necessarily. I I think about gels. So I go right, you know. So it's about four miles, or about the, you know. So the, and then that's you know x amount of minutes, and that's when my next gel is. So you're not thinking of the end. You're not thinking of mile twenty six or twenty four. You're just thinking of that next four miles of an hour, which then ticks by. Um, but yeah. that sort of helps me remember. I've found that sort of like because I'm I've got my first one next week in Yorkshire, and. Um, I uh, I've I've found like doing my long runs I get to a stage where it's oh right I'll do four miles and then towards the end it's sort of like oh well I'll have a drink at two miles mm. and then just sort of like I'm just chopping it up into little bits and then I'm never that far away from and I've found that really helpful um, but obviously you know as the only person on here who hasn't done a marathon I'm not really qualified to talk about it yet but we'll have to um, we'll have to say um, Al you've got some people have um, such a nice things about our guests so yeah no, we've, we've had loads, loads of shout outs for claire and uh paula you know lots of people you know really acknowledging what they've done in terms of the achievements of taking on their first marathon um we've also got sarah roper that was in very early on with the comments she was there on marathon day her first marathon on her first ballot doesn't oh. get much better than that does it <laughs> Wow. So let's hope you can keep the streak going, Sarah. Um, we've had an interesting comment from Jason, Jason Hawes. Um, he knows, and if you've listened to the show, probably Chris has ranted most weeks about uh, some of the uh, organisation in the run-up to the London Marathon, particularly about bag drops and expos. And Jason says, look, once you got over the line, that all kind of just went away. He had such an absolute experience that... Uh, that powered into significant yeah i'd just like to bring the ladies in on that you know did you and um, paula did you find that a lot of that talk were you able to shut that all out or did it you know did it affect your preparation or anything do you worry about this sort of thing uh, nothing that doesn't really bother me to be honest no i was Claire. i was no not at all just no you, no you're so laid not... back a pair of you brilliant well, I think it forced me to stay for two nights in London because I was stressing. Uh, the only bit I stressed about was what would I do with my stuff if I was only staying the night before. Mm. So I did stay for two nights, which gave me plenty of time to recover. So, and I had five guys for dinner. Oh, and, and, oh that's post race. Post, post, post race. And, yeah. and, I took a, and I took a cycle taxi from Trafalgar Square to Baker Street where I was staying. I've never done that before either. So it was a whole new experience. Yeah, it was about 400 quid, I think. No, 40 quid, 40 quid. <laughs> oh, sorry, you've done oh, a marathon. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't better. It, it was, it was, yeah. It's right. not like you could walk though, is it, at the end? I know I couldn't. I wasn't doing too badly. And I've been, I think I've recovered fairly well as well. I've just done my second run today and um, a bit faster today than I was on Tuesday. Yeah, so, Tuesday is horrible. We did one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about the aftermath in a minute. But um, as you will know, we have um, we have our lightning round questions where we ask for our guests, and of course we've got two guests, so we've got to get two in. So, so um, who would you, who would you like to do first, Al? Toss a coin. Yeah, go on then. Paula. Paula. Paula's up. <laughs> and then we'll do Claire at the end. So I'll leave you. In our total hands. Welcome back, Paula. Hi. <laughs> Everyone else goes off for a toilet break, so they kind of leave me to whiz through the lightning round. If you've heard it before, you might know some of the questions, but uh, uh, let's go for it anyway. Kay. First answers, please. So, bucket list race. Obviously, you've done London. What's next? New York. New York. That's a good one. Pre-race breakfast. Porridge and protein powder. Oh, favourite uh, distance? 10 miles. Adidas or Nike? Nike. Nike. Favourite brand of running shorts or leggings? Uh, Tiki Boo. Okay. Ketchup or brown sauce? Ketchup. Excellent. Winter training or summer training? Winter. 
Road or Trail. Road. One song playlist. Remember, this is going to be there for five hours, 22 minutes and 41 seconds. Flash dance, what a feeling. Okay, and last one, Blonde or Brunette? Blonde. Toby, run the titles, please, mate. Thank you, Paul. So, Paul, another member of the uh, Ticket Booth fan club. I see um, the order went out this week, Chris, sort of thing. And I think the last time we saw hysteria like that was during the Bay City Rollers heyday. It was uh, <laughs> absolute pandemonium on there of people desperate to get their leggings. And, uh, I, I don't know if you can see my collection behind me. Oh. On the door. So, I said to some of the girls at Hartford, they're a bit like these people, who, some of them, they're a bit like these people who uh, queue up for petrol when they've got three quarters of a tank. You know, there's loads of, loads of sort of like madness on the old ticket booth front, but um, you've all learned it. You've all learned it, you people, you know, everybody who's smashing out races at whatever distance, you've all learned. And, and, it, and it's nice to buy yourself something, isn't it? To, particularly after you've, um, after you've landed such a great achievement. So, what I want to talk about now, um, the elation of crossing the line. Was it everything it lived up, it, you wanted it to be, Paula? Yeah, it was. I um, Obviously, as you know, I've lost a couple of really important people in my life. So I, they were with me. And my sister lives in New Zealand. She was absolutely devastated. She couldn't be here to see me go over the line. She is a member of this community as well, so hopefully she'll see this. Um, when I got the 385 yards to go, I took a photo and I got my camera out and I filmed me running over the line and that was for her. Um, and then when I crossed the line, I bawled my eyes out. <laughs> it just, it just, every bit of emotion that I'd felt for the whole day just came flooding out. I was, yeah, completely blown away. And then to see other people doing the same thing and how emotional everybody was just kind of made it worse. <laughs> yeah. I was a blithering wreck. And then I waited for Mel to cross the line as well. And then she was a blithering wreck as well. So <laughs> that was, it was, yeah, it was amazing. More than I could have hoped for. Oh, great. And Claire, I, I saw the video. Somebody captured a video of you two, you and Sabrina crossing the line. And I nearly had a tear myself. It was so emotional. It was lovely. Yeah, we were so lucky. It was one of the Broxbourne ladies, Wendy, I think Sabrina said it was, um, who had uh, a picture of us, not sort of uh, from sort of inside the, where the line was. So after we'd crossed the line and um, we sort of had a, a hug and we were watching another 40 come down, um, so we're watching out for her, but yeah, and Sabrina and I had a little tear as well, and 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 just kind of can't believe we've done it. You know, it was that it was that conversation really. Can't believe we have just run the London Marathon because that is, you know, it's something I've watched on TV since I was a uh, as a kid. You know, and there were other lovely moments as we were running as well, and things that you know, I think I did the YMCA at one point um, in. <laughs> in uh, I think it was around Woolwich or somewhere there was people sitting in their gardens there were people on microphones shouting out and singing um just and going over Tower Bridge and then sort of coming along the embankment and when we saw I didn't see Alan again but I saw again some more of the Hartford um lot um along the embankment who'd been on the water station and uh, Andrew Fletcher and different people we saw and it was just amazing and I think the whole thing it, I agree with Paula, it was just so emotional. And then I, I walked up afterwards, I'd left Sabrina, and I walked up afterwards to Trafalgar Square and I saw my husband and then all over again, started crying all over again. So yeah, it was uh, it, it was just amazing, incredible. I would highly recommend it. We were very lucky. Oh, brilliant, yeah. It certainly seemed like that. I just must, must give a shout out to John Birch at Shout for, uh, for your support. Thanks very much, mate, thanks for that. Um, so, yeah, blimey, I'm emotionally drained just going through it or watching you, you know, talking about it now. It was, um, and it was a great thing to see. You know, when I saw that video, I, I really touched me. It was great. Now, it's nearly a week now since you've done it. What has, Claire, what's the week been like? 
Um, yeah, I got, so you said I was a teacher and I um, and I had done an assembly last Friday for my, my kids at school and I told them I was going to run the marathon and they all said they were going to watch me on TV. So when I went back into school this week, they asked me if I came first um, and, I, and I had to burst their bubble and say, no, no, I didn't come. Did you come second then? No, I didn't come second. Um, so I had lots of questions from lots of uh, from lots of the kids at school. And uh, I took my medal in and showed them, uh, my head teacher showed them in assembly, um, uh, which they quite liked. And we've been doing at school this week, we've been doing the uh, mini, uh, the mini marathon as well. So because I was doing it last week, um, we signed up um, with the London Marathon to do the mini marathon in school. So they've been running 2.6 miles this week in school, all of the children. So they've been so doing sort of every day. They're the primary been, kids, aren't they? Yeah, they're primary school children. Yeah, and so they've yes. and they've apps, they've been loving it, and they said, well, "Have we run our marathon today yet? Can we run our marathon today yet, Mrs. Mythen? When are we going out to run our marathon?" So they actually have believed this week that they've been running a marathon, which has been just amazing. Um, so really good. In terms of recovery, Tuesday night at Hartford really hurt. Um, it was the nicest Chris had ever been to us. I think he was really, he was really, uh, <laughs> he was really forgiving on Tuesday night. He did, he did. I don't let. think Charlie would say that. I'll just drop him in it, being as he's not here. That uh, oh no, Charlie, Charlie yeah, Charlie, who of, didn't realise he'd run a marathon until after yeah. he'd been yelling. She'd and done it. We, we had a session. Well, some of us, either if we were tapering or we were recovering, we were taking it rather easy. But for half the group, um, it was quite a quite an intense sort of sprint session, and. Uh, Charlie, who's in the group, she was involved in that, and Chris was pushing her along, and she's like, oh, I can't believe it. Oh. And, uh, and she hadn't told it. He didn't know that she'd done the virtual on the Sunday and that she'd done it, and it wasn't until we got back to back to base. And he's like, what? What you did? Did you? Oh, I can't believe you tell me? <laughs> what did you tell me? And she was like, oh, she was cursing, bless her. So, um, yeah, yeah I'm was... jumping with a question for Claire. I want to know how many pupils in your school. You'll see the relevance in a minute. Um, how many children in my school? About yeah. only it's quite a small school, about two, but two twenty something like that. Okay, because Rachel Gardner wants to know how many people you told during the week that you've run a marathon. Oh, so probably not as many as Rachel told. I would say. <laughs> in excess of two hundred and twenty, at least. Yeah. Well, I told them all in assembly, so probably quite a lot. And then, yeah, I didn't really tell them this week. They all asked me. So. And the um, supplementary was how many days consecutively did you wear your t-shirt, your finishers t-shirt? You know, I haven't worn my t-shirt yet. What? I haven't worn it. Um. Oh. I haven't worn it yet, but I have bought my um, 26.2 Club One from, from the 40. I have got that one to wear, so I will be getting on to that. I haven't. I think it's because I haven't really run this week. I've only done two runs, so I so haven't really had a So you were back in action on Tuesday. Have you been out since? Yeah, Wednesday morning I went out, um, and that was a little bit easier again. I think, you know, I know we were sort of talking about this before, and you were talking about this on the – the long run previously about that recovery and Alan kind of goes, does the Hanson plan, doesn't he? And it's sort of, you know, it says about resting, but I found for me um, that it was a lot better once I'd been out and I just did a couple of miles really kind of gently, but I found it much better. Um, and my legs felt a lot better after I'd been out, which I didn't believe they would, but they, they really did. So, and I feel fine again now. I do feel absolutely fine probably from, from Wednesday night onwards. All good. Paula, are you a fan of the recovery run or do you sort of like um, like a bit of a rest? I think Paula last year would have been flat out for a week. <laughs> but Paula this year, um, I walked half an hour on Monday morning to get to the New Balance store. That was really, really good for me, actually. Um, Tuesday, I ran three and a half miles with um, a local running group. And then I've been out this morning and done four so and i've got a park run tomorrow in my shirt you know my london marathon shirt right, so you're to up, see up. That. what about the mental aspect after you finish you know such a momental momentous thing you know are you um you obviously look back on it you know we've talked about the um the actual relation of finishing has there been any sort of come down for you mentally not for me um 
I'm running Oxford half next weekend, so I've had to try and keep mentally strong for that. Um, I'm I'm going up with Faye and Paula Swallow. We're going to stay up for for a night. Um, so I just need to keep ticking over. So I think because I've got that in the diary already, I don't think I'll probably won't come down until after I've done that one, I suppose. Mm. What about you, Claire? You still still buzzing? Um, yeah, I yeah, absolutely. It's been it's been it's been really nice and it's been it's kind of been nice now the pressure's off and you can just I think I've I've just enjoyed this week. If I want to run, I can run, but I don't have to run a certain amount of miles. I can just do whatever I want, and that's quite nice. Um, I've got a couple of things coming up. So I've, I'll be in Yorkshire next week with you, Ian, um, doing the 10 mile. Um, and and then I've got a couple of halves in November as well, sort of locally. So it will just, I think I'll just drop back down now to sort of 12 or 13 and, and do those as my long run and, and just sort of keep it ticking over, really. Toby, are you like that? Are you glad that you're not sort of like being prescribed certain distances at certain times on certain days? Glad to get out of that routine. Yeah, uh, in a way, as though my midweek routine's been gone for a long time, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I mean, it's quite nice knowing I don't have to get out there on Sunday and or Saturday this week and do a 16, 20 odd. Um, but I'm, I'm actually kind of going the other way, but I think, you know, looking forward to kind of getting a plan back together, you know, something a bit more structure. But again, I think that is because I didn't. For the last few months i haven't really been following one mm. um so yeah kind of want to do that i mean i suppose it's you know doing london's pushed me on a bit of thinking you know my next big one i think is edinburgh next year which has been postponed for how many years so far yeah i'll be there it's kind of pushed yeah. me to go I'll, i want to give it a good go you know yeah. what i mean i want to get that training spot on and we got the time get it pushed in um so yeah that's that's kind of what it's done to me but i think yeah up till Obviously, there's a little mountain in Wales to climb up in a couple of weeks. Um, oh, you'll be all right. You'll breeze that, mate. You'll be fine. Got, got to get that through. And then you're probably similar, you know, push maybe a few halves, stuff like that. And then, yeah, look forward to getting back on some training for next year. Um, maybe maybe a March marathon. Let's we'll see. Yeah. Let's see what about. Uh, what's your experience at the Marathon Blues, well, mate? I, 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 it's, it's interesting because I think, you know, the post-marathon blues is an actual thing. You know, there's been a fair bit of research into it. And I, I, from a personal experience, when I ran my first marathon in Berlin back in 2018, I think I suffered from it. You know, I think what was, although I was still planning on doing runs and I was still kind of going to be active, uh, didn't quite go according to plans. So there was a bit of kind of disappointment in there. That, what, the race? Uh, yeah, kind of, you know. My running buddy at the time, we'd spent weeks, and he's a mathematician and a professor. So we had every split nailed to within every second. And your first marathon, it don't go like that, does it? So there's an element of disappointment, but there did seem to be just a big gap, you know, having concentrated so much. And being a handsome runner, where you're running to plan six days a week, there was kind of that moment where you're looking around going, you know, what do I do next? Um, so it sounds like Paula and Claire have, have, have kind of got it spot on in terms of making sure they're going to be busy. Um, more recently, um, doing Dorney, when I managed to crack the sub four, you know, again, huge elation, worked really hard, come out of COVID, you know, trying consistently because I thought it was going to be running, running London, it didn't quite happen. And I must admit, over the summer, it's been quite hard, really, to get some of my motivation wow. back. Because that was such a, a big target for such a long time. It's taken a little while to go, well, how do I reset? How do I refocus? And how do I have the energy to go through that all again? I'm, I will. I've actually got four marathons now signed up for 2022. So uh, I'm going to jump in with uh, both feet next yeah, year. But, uh, it is a thing. And, I, and I'm sure you know there will be lots of people that have run their first marathon may not be back in the ballot like Paula or Claire and you know they could well be thinking what do I do next and it is about finding that that something that's going to get you it may not be running it could be something else it could be triathlon it could be you know some other big challenges that you've had on your list for a long time because I do say London Marathon changes you or a marathon changes you hopefully it's always for the good I suppose that leads to the um the big question then to our two guests in that 
are you going to do it again? Not necessarily London or, you know, what's next? What's your next plan? I, I'm sort of more long term than like the Stevenage Half Marathon and going to Oxford and things like that. I mean, what are your big targets for next year, say? I um, I I entered the ballot for the London Marathon on the Saturday night before I did it on the Sunday, just in case, just in case I sort of chickened out the next day, if you like. But um, having done that, that would be amazing to get that again. I think the chances are obviously really slim, but um, I have got Brighton booked because that was the one that I had booked before. Uh, although I do keep on threatening to Petra that I'm going to drop it back down to a 10K again, but I'll I'll see how I go, see how I feel after Christmas, I think. And Paula? Oh, she's oh, on mute. She's on, you're on your, you, you've gone quiet, you're on your mute button. How am I on mute? Oh, we Are did that. Back? 51 minutes, that was a good effort, we cracked on. <laughs> Have you got me back? Yeah, yeah, you're in. Yeah, yeah. What's, um, what's next year? Well, What's the sort of like the long term plan? Well, next year I've got Ragnar Relay in September with the with the ladies. Um, I don't know if Carolyn's doing that. Is she, Alan, with us? I'm not sure. I'm not sure who's in I'm my on team. camera. I can't. I can't make. I can't express a view, but I believe she is. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, yeah. So that yeah. So <laughs> oh no! I've just heard. Just heard. No, no, she's not. No, she's not. Okay, but there's a few of us. So I think it's the Paulers and Faye and me and possibly someone else but i can't remember but yeah so that's next year's goal to get that done um possibly a, another bigger marathon maybe the year oh we've lost her she's disappeared oh, she's dropped she's gone gone yeah yeah it was um i think we, you know she's definitely not rest you know she may be resting her mobile phone but she's definitely not resting when it comes to uh a running, hey, wasn't that an inspired decision to do a lightning round first? There now, just the luck of the draw. The way hey, that was good planning, <laughs> wasn't it? But I think that leads us in nicely to our one email this week. I know we've got an email special coming up in a few weeks' time, but I think we've had an email in, haven't we, Toby? Yeah, give us the thumbs up. Yeah, there's an email, um, about um, we haven't had Richard Head on this week, thankfully. But apparently his sister, Sue, down in Brisbane, Australia, has got a question for Chris. I know he's not here, about yeah. favourite sunglasses to wear. He's got no. favourite ones. And the new, I think the new range is out soon. Um, Are they? I mean, right, OK. He could oh, be here, here himself. But for those on the podcast, that he, Chris has made an appearance via, um, via a picture. I won't reveal the source of the picture. Mm. <laughs> um, but he's got a lovely fetching pair of cupcake sunglasses on. Very Elton John. Um, I'll get to put a link in the, out later with where you can get them from. So there you yeah. go. Sue from Brisbane, that is the latest thing to be wearing when you're out on your long runs listening to the podcast. Thank you, Chris. Near in spirit. Yeah. We're missing you, mate. Paul is back. Sorry. Yeah, so you know, yeah, so you, I mean, you were saying, you know, you've got the Ragnar and uh, there's plenty, plenty of more stuff that you're looking forward to and cracking on. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll see. How the recovery continues, I, I feel pretty good. So I might need to pencil a few more things in. Right, we're entering the home straight now. So, Alan, I think you should take Claire and do the lightning round. And what do you think of the new credits? Good, isn't they? Flash. I, I, yeah, they're brilliant. Love them. Excellent. Where's well, your baby, mate? You know, this Thank is you. what you, you know, yeah, this is your it. thing. Twice in we'll a line. Oh, right, we'll let, I'll often. let you interrogate. Um, I'll let you interrogate Claire then. I'll chip off. Oh, dear. Hi, right, Claire. Welcome back to your turn on the lightning round. Was you Thank listening you. when uh, uh, Paul has turned? Well, I do listen most weeks, so yeah, well, I, but I can only ever remember coming. about three yeah. questions. And that's okay because I do repeat them. So let's go okay. for it, shall we? Bucket yeah. lit. Oh, pardon me. Bucket list race. It was London. London. It was London. It so was, but I don't next? know. I London again. I'd love to do a London again. Right in the ballot. Okay. Pre-race breakfast. Uh, porridge and bagel. And bagel. Oh, mixing it up. Well, like a little bit. Um, probably ten k. Cool. Just under an hour. Adidas or Nike. 
Um, neither really. Brooks, but Nike if I had to choose one. If you had to. Right. Favourite brand of running shorts or leggings? Tikaboo. Tikaboo. Two Tikaboo. Oh, and Sweaty Betty. Oh, okay. Ketchup or brown sauce? Brown sauce. Winter training or summer training? Uh, winter, but maybe a, a convert now. Yeah, you're coming around to thinking the other way. Road or trail? Road. Okay, one song playlist. What is oh, it? Now, Sabrina and I were talking about this when we were running, um, and Mr. Blue Sky ELI came on as we were running, and I said to Sabrina, I think this is going to be my one song playlist. I said, I think this will be it. This is it. Excellent. That's a good choice. And then last one. Bloody Mary or Singapore Sling to celebrate? Oh gosh, no, not Bloody Mary. That's tomatoes. No, the other one. Vodka. The, the other one. one's gin. You going gin? Singapore oh, gin. Sling. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah okay, gin. Cool. Excellent. Well done, Claire, and well done on your marathon, Toby. Run the titles, please. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Paula. I hope you've managed to. Um, yeah, I hope we've managed to give some sort of insight to people who haven't had the marathon experience of what it's actually like as a first timer. Congratulations to you both for completing such a brilliant thing, and um, it's so good to hear that um, it's not going to be the last time that um, you're going to be uh, looking to uh, complete a race like that. So, thanks ever so much for uh, joining us. It's a big weekend this weekend up in Manchester, particularly. Anybody who is um, doing the marathon or the half up there, you know, best of Best of luck. Um, I gave a shout out to my niece about doing the Bournemouth Half Marathon last week. But fortunately, she didn't do it last week. It's this week. So I'm <laughs> going to give her a shout out this week as well to say uh, best of luck to Leah for that. And um, <clears throat> thanks ever so much for joining us again for the Long Run Podcast. We'll be back next week. Chris is back next week, I think. And um, I don't know what we'll be talking about. Something don't get send your emails in. We haven't mentioned the email, longrunshow at gmail.com. <coughs> ready for our email special in a few weeks' time. Yeah, see, it's a good job Alan's here because he's the only one who can remember the address. But, yeah, it's up on the screen now. So, fortunately, I'd say it's longrunshow at gmail.com. Write about what you like. You know, we, we do, you know, running related preferably, but we will bang on about other stuff. So uh, we're quite willing to take that. So we are the thanks loose women of the running world. Remember that? Indeed. Loose women, apparently. Are we still second in Latvia, Ty? Has anyone checked the stats this week? Slovakia. I mean, after Facebook last week, who knows? You're probably taking Yeah, we'll probably crash uh, through the floor. Yeah. yeah. But well, who knows? Even see their site up, so who knows? So, well, the only way to ensure that we we maintain our position as the fifth most uh, downloaded uh, podcast in the UK is for you to do that yourselves. You know, put, go to um, Apple or Amazon or Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts and download us and take us out on your long run this week wherever you're going we wish you all the best of luck thanks ever so much for joining us again thanks to claire thanks to paula well Thank done you. again lovely to see you back al hopefully this will be a regular thing and you'll uh graciously create our presence more often that'd be lovely <coughs> most of the year yeah yeah and thanks to toby and thanks to facebook not only for getting us going but for also shutting down for six mm. hours on monday so some of us who didn't do the marathon at least got a little bit of respite from people's uh, medal pictures and wonderful experiences and things like that. So we could come back and talk to people about it on Friday, fully refreshed and full of the joys of all things London Marathon. But hopefully that'll be it now. We won't be banging on about London Marathon much more. So thanks ever so much for joining us. We'll be back next week on YouTube and Facebook, 7 o'clock Friday. If you can join us, that'd be great. If not, please download us at your... Um, your site of choice and we would love to see you so thanks ever so much for joining us and run the titles <laughs>